In this video, I'm going to show you how to get OS Engine image metadata. For example, uh, getting the image acquisition date, cloud cover, or any other type of information associated uh, with the data because uh, uh, you need to know the data before you are using um, the data. So let's get started first. Let's go open uh, an internet browser and then go to tutorials.gmap.org. You can also uh, see the links in the description. And then once you're on the website, click image, image metadata. Upper right corner, uh, here you will see uh, an icon. So you can click the icon to download the notebook to your computer. I'm going to download to my documents folder and then GE, I hit save. So uh, the notebook now is uh, saved to my computer. And the next step is to open uh, Anaconda or Jupyter Notebook. Uh, if you have not installed uh, Anaconda uh, yet, uh, you can follow my previous tutorial. So I'm just going to come here and then uh, click Anaconda prompt. After that, you can activate the Conda environment. So just type Conda activate. And since we already installed the uh, environment uh, called GE, then just hit enter, then type Jupyter Notebook. Hit enter. It should open a browser. And then just navigate to documents. GE. Uh, so from here, you should be able to see the notebook that uh, we use. Uh, then we just click the image metadata. So this is notebook example we're going to use. Uh, if you already installed the, the, the notebook extensions, you can click here to see uh, the table of content. Uh, so you can navigate through if needed and um, so we're going to go through here keep in mind this is uh, the, um, the notebook is adapted from the earth engine documentation so if you want you can go to just the uh, earth engine web page and then platform documentation get started so from here uh, on the left side you should be able to see image and then oh, here image metadata uh, image information and metadata so the example actually is from here but this is for javascript i already converted to uh, python so you, if you use python uh, this will be uh, easier for you and uh, since it's already being converted and this gets through uh, here one thing that uh, you might want to know is that uh, the syntax might be very similar but in python in order to see the uh, information you uh, you will need to use get info because uh, Earth Engine is basically a server site. Um, any Earth Engine object is in the server. And in order to see the content within the browser, so this is the client site, uh, you need to basically unwrap uh, the information. So you, you can use the dot get info. Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, shortly. So first, let's import the library. And uh, you can either click run or uh, shift enter uh, to execute the source code and then so the first step we import the libraries and then we create an interactive map okay so right now this is just an empty map uh, it's interactive you can zoom in you can zoom out and after that we can add some data so as you can see here uh earth engine loads data in the cloud so what we need is a, an image id um, we already talked about this in the previous uh, tutorial so uh with the id uh, this is a string and then you just wrap that with an uh, image then you get on cloud image uh, image in the cloud next we set the visualization parameters right so this is a lens set 8 uh, we can visualize using b5 4 and 3 or whatever bank combination you want and we also set the uh, minimum maximum once you execute um, you should be able to see the image in here so we also use the center object uh, so in here you see this uh, actually the, um, the syntax is pretty much the same as the JavaScript uh, so I already implemented these functions uh, so it's much easier for you to switch from JavaScript to uh, Python and on the upper right here uh, you can use this icon to uh, change the opacity if needed you can also change the uh, visual, uh, visualization parameters so you can turn that on and off you can also click this one to customize if you want but um so i'm just going to um for example you can change the opacity from here if you want uh, so it's very easy to customize uh, you just you don't need to write any line of code uh, you can also for example i can change to b five four 
and just hit apply you should be able to see the changes right i can slightly change a little bit apply you hit close so uh, just play a lot uh play with the uh, visualization until you get some parameters that you like uh and then you can also from here uh, once you select you can also just click import so after you find the optimal parameters you can import and you will create a new line of code in here to show so you what kind of visualization parameters uh, that uh, you set and then all you need to do just copy this one and then paste here so that you, you uh, next time when you load the image you don't have to go through the same uh, process you just uh, basically you fix the parameters and then you can display the image okay so this is how you load an image to the map next we are going to get some metadata information uh, there are a lot of things you can get but um, we're just going to show you some examples if you want to know what kind of information you can get from the image uh, it's actually simple you just create a new cell and then since this is the variable we're going to use uh, you can just image dot and then hit tap on your keyboard so on your keyboard is going to show you the list of things that you can apply to an image but this is a lot of information in, order, in addition to metadata there can be also a lot of functions you can apply uh, we'll talk about data in this course but for now uh, for example we can just dot and then just type b hit um tap again on your keyboard you will see that for example band types uh, band names and, and big count so we can just for example uh, band names again this is a function so you need to uh, end with parentheses if you just hit alt enter right now you will, you will print out something like this uh, e talk list and talk list and then this is a memory address again this is an earth engine server side object uh, you cannot really see the server side object unless you unwrap because the server side object can be pretty huge uh, if you don't want to un uh, unwrap everything until it is really needed so in this case we want to see how many bands or for example the band names of this image then you need to use dot get info parentheses and then again alt enter so now you see basically the earth engine uh, list has been converted to a python list so in that way we can see the contents uh, between this uh, within this you can also see the band type for example image hit tab and then band types parentheses and again you need to use dot get info shift enter or band type so there's another end here all right so this also shows you the specific information about each one you will see here the pixel type precision it's uh, integer and the minimum and maximum so those are all pretty much uh, very similar but we also have the pixel quality uh, image band and uh, this is something different from uh, the regular spectral band so this is just to show you uh, how you can get the uh, band type and band uh, info uh, this is the same as those uh, two lines so, okay so you can get the name these are the older names how why do we want this sometimes it, uh because if you're doing uh programming you want to get things directly from here rather than enter a bank name individually so they say later you want to maybe use the first or second band to do something then you can just use the uh, bank names because uh the name can be different dip, uh, depends on the image so if you know the index you can actually get based on the index you can get the bank name okay so this is how we can get the main uh, name next we can get the projection so different from uh, uh traditional remote sensing imagery uh earth engine each image is independent so even if you have multiple spectral bands so the each band can have uh different projection or different um, uh, resolution so in order to get the projection you need to select a band first so you can use the image uh, earlier I show you here we have a lot of bands in here so in this case we just want to see for example what's the projection for band one so you then you select the image and this one became uh, become becomes a new image and then you can apply the projection so you can see the projection of that image again shift enter you see here types and uh, a coordinate system also transform something like that so this is epsg 32 6 um, 10 if you don't know like what this means you can go to the epsg.io to look at the information um, you can search for any uh, number so this is basically utm zone uh, 10n uh, in the in the north uh, so 
uh, depending on the location you might get a different uh, number so this is uh, something uh, very useful especially later if we want to export the data you also need to specify uh, the EPSG number and so if you know that uh, you can directly put the number if you don't know you can go online and to the EPSG.io to search the number so this is how you get the projection again this image uh, probably all the, the bands are the same projection but if you uh, use other images it might not be the case uh, sometimes the image can have different uh, projections so for example if I change to 10 uh, it should be the same uh, still EPSG uh, 32 6 10 okay uh, also, okay so also the next one is um, uh, spatial resolution so in Earth engine uh, it's not called resolution it's called nominal scale so the nominal scale is basically uh, uh, basically beneath the projection uh, class so once you get the projection then you can get the nominal scale so let's take a look at this one for example bank one and nominal scale 30 so this is in meter uh basically the spatial resolution is 30 meter uh for land set if you use other images you probably get a different uh, number for example for sentinel uh, uh two you get like um 10 meter resolution or for some other uh, images uh you might get one meter or one kilometer so it depends so this is how you can get uh the spatial resolution of the image you can um like i said um the spatial resolution can be different for uh for different um, bands uh for example in this image they're all the same uh, you you don't see the difference but uh it's not always the case for other images as you can see from this one here it, it's kind of pretty long but uh you can also uh, use a g map so i can show you in here uh g map also has a function called i don't remember exactly maybe image sale size or something okay so image sale size parentheses so in here you can input just the image and we can take a look again this is uh earth engine object you need to use top get info uh to look at what's inside uh 30 meter so this one basically retrieve the um it's basically it's just this one behind the scene but it might be easier to remember so gmap dot image underscore sale size and then just put the image in there you, you, you use dog info otherwise uh you will just get an earth engine object and uh, so sometimes you might need to use this one to do some computation so uh, if you're doing computation using earth engine you don't need to use dog info because uh it's still in the um on the server so you can just use the number to do computation next one uh property names so what does this one mean so this is more like uh, the uh, metadata information so you can get all the what kind of property does the image uh, have so you just hit uh, shift enter and this has all the pro uh, properties uh, of the image uh, image quality cloud cover system id lens set id uh, etc so uh, if you want to get a specific one you can just use image dot get okay so dot get is not to get a pixel value it's get to get an image property so in this case you can get the cloud cover you can get the system id you can get whatever is within this list so this is a list and they say we want to get the cloud cover you just put within the uh, parentheses and then uh single quotes cloud cover so the cloud cover is uh, 0.06 that means six uh, percent you can also for example system id I just uh, put this one here. You should be able to get the ID. So this is the ID that we used earlier, exactly uh, at the very beginning here. This is how we get the ID. And uh, later, I'm going to uh, in 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 this course, I'm going to show you how you can find out the ID or filter by image collection. But for now, just assume that you already know the ID, and then you can uh, get the image. Okay. So this is how we get the image uh, also you can get the image acquisition date uh, so in earth engine uh, most of the image actually has this property called system uh, colon time start and this is if you just check this one here and uh, this is like a utc number uh, it's it, it's difficult you won't be able to guess like what uh, the uh, year months and days so in order to do that you need to convert the format this is uh um earth engine uh date object uh it's on the server side but you can actually do the formatting and then to convert it to a uh, much easier uh readable format uh using year months and date you can also have time like uh hour 
uh, uh, minutes and seconds but uh, we just need the the year and, uh, and the and months and date for this example then you just use the date dot format and within the format passing the pattern that you want and still this one is still an earth engine object but it has been converted to a string and then so all we need to do is just to uh use stock get info to get the date so this is um it's not very straightforward uh so, so for beginners you might find typical why does earth engine use this uh, so this is the second from uh since 1970s um january 1st and for every second so this is the cumulative uh, number of seconds so in order to do that you can always convert to this number and then you can get the real date okay so this is how you can get the image metadata information uh individually uh one by one uh, you can just use the dot get and then the name of the properties in gmap i also uh develop a function that you can just use one line of code to get everything so it might be much easier because as you see earlier from uh here uh you sometimes it might be difficult to see like to get information so this one line of function can get you pretty much all the metadata information again we are using the same image and then you just pass in the image to this function and then use the dot get info uh, here it shows you everything so you can get the image property and also the values of that property uh, so for example cloud cover 0.6 and cloud cover land uh, 0.1 right you can also get the bank names that we used earlier so this is more like a system uh anything start with system colon uh, most likely for most of the earth engine image you are going to see this kind of properties so you can always get system uh colon basically for all the images you can just uh, image dot get and then point to see inside you can put this one you can put this one so this is the uh asset file size 540 megabyte okay so this is a pretty big uh image and if you need to do, for example traditionally you need to download this one to your computer and in order to do processing but for now uh, in right now you can just use google's engine you just need to reference the image id without having to download anything and then you can use that for all kind of uh, uh, uh raster processing so it's uh, going to save you a lot of time so if you want more information you can go through the properties to see uh if there's anything that you need again so this is image property uh, this one is still an earth engine object so if i just alt enter you won't be able to see the content inside so this is earth engine dictionary you can use the dictionary to get use talk get again okay so it's the same like i i want to get the uh let's say the cloud cover and you just need to type in the cloud cover you can have single quotes or double quotes uh, either one is fine once you get this one, uh, it's still earth engine object. So you need to have dot get info at the end and then alt enter. Then you should be able to get this one. Uh, again, you can. So the nice thing about the gmap uh, image props function is that for all the dates, um, I have already converted them to a readable format. So it's no longer uh, this long number. Okay, so this is behind the scene. It's already been converted. So it's uh, readable and you can just for example let's click this one and in here shift enter uh, you'll be able to see the the date directly so i highly recommend if you need to get the uh, image date uh you can also i think there's another function uh, let me here image prop uh maybe just it, um uh, G, let me see here ge map dot i think there's one called image state okay so you can do the same thing image state and then just passing the name of the image alt enter uh, this is a string and then dot get info if the enter then you get the date okay so there are a couple ways you can do that you can use earth engine uh, the uh, function you can also use a uh, uh, image um, gmap functions so the gmap function actually simpli uh, simplifies the process you need to get uh, the data and they get the information so it uses just one line of code uh, so in, so that you don't have to write many lines of code actually to do the uh, converter okay so uh that's all for this video um i hope you enjoy uh, this video um and uh, i will see you in the next uh video take care